Last year, we brought the Vietnam problem before the Security Council of the United Nations at the time of the Gulf of Tonkin affair. But Hanoi refused an invitation to come to the Security Council to talk about it. The distinguished Secretary General of the United Nations, U Tant, considered a peace mission himself to bring about peace, but Hanoi and Pei Ping uh, told him not to come. Britain has made uh, many efforts to find a path to a settlement. First, by working toward a new conference in Geneva, and then by a visit of one of their senior statesmen, Mr. Patrick Gordon Walker. But the effort for a Geneva conference uh, has thus far been blocked, and Mr. Gordon Walker was told that he should stay away from Hanoi and Pei Ping. The Commonwealth attempted to send a Committee of the Commonwealth to various capitals to explore the possibilities of peace. We welcome that initiative, but Hanoi and Pei Ping uh, told them uh, not to come. We made a number of efforts on our own, both publicly and privately. President Johnson at Baltimore, for example, offered unconditional discussion uh, with the government's concerned. But Hanoi and Pei Ping call this offer a hoax. Seventeen non-aligned nations publicly appealed for a peaceful solution by negotiations without preconditions. We welcome this proposal, but it was rejected by Hanoi and Pei Ping. The distinguished president of India made a constructive suggestion that there be an end of hostilities and an Afro-Asian police force established uh, in Vietnam. To us, uh, this proposal was full of interest and hope. But by Hanoi and Red China, it was rejected as a betrayal. So all of these abrupt and violent rejections of peaceful settlement are just what they appear to be. Clear proof that Hanoi is not yet prepared for discussions. Unless it be accepted in advance that South Vietnam be subjected to communist domination. And so the record seems very clear to us. Hanoi is presently resisting the road to peace. Peiping, even more so. The declared doctrine and purpose of the Chinese communists remain clear. The domination of all of Southeast Asia. And indeed, if we listen to what they're saying to us, the domination of the great world beyond. The United States will continue to make every effort toward reasonable negotiation, and there can be no doubt as to our intention. We do not seek the destruction of any government, nor do we covet a foot of any territory. But we insist, and we will always insist, that the people of South Vietnam shall have the right of choice, the right to shape their own destiny in free elections in the South or throughout all Vietnam under international supervision. And they shall not have any government imposed upon them by force and terror, so long as we can prevent it. We do not want an expanding struggle with consequences that no one can foresee, nor will we bluster or bully or flaunt our power. But we will not surrender. And we will not retreat.